Hi guys, this is my new playlist on I2C protocol. In this playlist, we shall learn I2C protocol from scratch to programming. Okay, so this is an introductory video to I2C protocol. So before learning I2C protocol, we should learn first what is communication. See protocol, these protocols used for communication. Okay. It is nothing but transferring the data efficiently and properly. What I mean efficiently and properly we'll discuss later. I want to send the data from device A to B. Okay. So how can we do it? Now, for example, the data is something like 10100001. This is the data. Okay. If I want to send the data from point A, from the device A to device B, there are two methods okay since there are eight bits are there i can simply draw eight lines or simply i'll simply connect eight lines for transferring this for transferring the data from here to here there are eight lines okay which means for every specific bit there is a specific line okay so if you transfer the data like this all the bits are transferred at a time so this is nothing but a parallel communication okay see it is it is fast and here there are so many wires are there right which means it is bulky and it requires more number of wires which means more cost for the wires okay so then we came with an idea called serial communication then what is serial communication see in this we need only one wire okay so how how gonna eight bits are transferred through one wire it is simple right we'll put bit by bit right we'll send bit by bit first we'll put one on this line okay after it reaches b i'll put another zero and so on and so forth okay so compared to parallel communication it is slow in data transfer because see we have to send bit by bit whereas in parallel communication all the eight bits are transferred at a time so it, it it takes more time in serial communication wherein parallel communication it takes less time but compared to cost here serial communication is cheaper okay if i have a requirement like if i have a device called c okay i have a device called c i have a device called d okay now what happens if i do like this okay i can send the data from a to b c d okay is it possible yes it is possible now my criteria is see i want to establish the communication between a and c and none other than the devices other devices should not respond okay or should not should not take the data okay i have to i have to establish the communication between only a and c so is it possible in this communication whatever the protocol so it's, it is possible the answer is yes but not using like this we have to use this protocol okay then in a 7 bit address in a 7 bit address we can connect up to 128 devices which means i can communicate this device with 128 devices independently what i mean independently is that i can establish a proper communication between whatever the device i want okay but it needs some protocol okay so before understanding that we have to see how exactly the serial communication works okay see here a device called m and here a device called s okay i have to i have to send this data properly to the s which means so what is my approach for example if i put zero on this s will take one if i put one on this line s will take so by this it works but practically it is not possible because what so why why i'm saying it's not possible see for example if this m is me for example me so i'm sending every bit for every 10 seconds so what i mean is for every 10 seconds i'm gonna send each data which means i'll send from msb to lsb which this is ms right from M msb to lsb so first in first 0 to 10 seconds i'll place one there okay and from 10 to 20 i'll change the data from 20 to 30 from 30 to 40 and like 
this and goes on okay so it has a fixed time okay that time should be known to the device called s here here right because if this timing is wrong then the data interpreted the interpreted by the s is wrong for example if s is taking the data for every 5 seconds then what will be the consequences let's see the data interpreted by is see first 5 seconds here the value is 1 okay 1 the second okay and next 5 seconds value is 1 next 5 seconds 0 here 0 here 1 here 1 here 0 here 0 one. the value is 1 1 0 0 1 1 double 0 okay you can see this value and this value they are not matching which means we have to properly for, for proper communication we should have some protocol okay we should have some understanding okay so if i send the data at uh, for every 10 seconds you have to receive the data for every 10 seconds right so now so that's why we have introduced a system called clock okay for example here it is a, there is a clock see clock and here also there is a clock okay by somehow i have configured the clock for every 10 seconds here here also for every 10 seconds here. if this clock and this clock are same which means the timing i'm talking about same then for every 10 seconds it will take the data and will get a proper proper value so since these clocks are independent okay independent means for every for every device it has its clock for m it, the clock is at here for us, the clock is at here, okay? Since there are different, then it is known as asynchronous. But in I2C, both the devices share a common clock, which means here the clock is connected to here, okay? It is synchronous. Since share, same clock is sharing, it is known as... Now, if I put a clock here, so these two having some understanding, okay? Now how exactly the data will transfer we'll see with a waveform so the protocol is whenever the clock is high remember one thing whenever the clock is high s will see what is the data on this line okay this line is nothing but s d a line okay whenever the clock is high S will see what is the data on the line and it will take the data into internal registers. Okay. Whenever the clock is low, it will not do anything. It will sit silent. Okay. But here M will give the data, which means M will change the data on the SDA line. Okay. So you got some idea, right? A clock has high and low. How to we'll now we'll send this data and see whether it works or not. Okay. So, I am the master, right? I am the M. I am going to send using this clock pulse this data. Okay. I am going to start with one. Okay. So we have some protocol that is whenever the clock is high, we have to read the data. Whenever the clock is low, we have to modify the data, which means we have to put the data on the line. Okay. The clock is low. Okay. So here I can put my data. So initially SDA, SDA line has SDA line by default. It is in one state. Okay. So so we need to transfer the data from msb to lsp okay this is msp and this is lsp so i'll put the data on the sta line when the clock is low here the clock is low right so initially it is in, it is in one state so no nothing changes okay so it will continue up to here okay see i have drawn these dotted lines whenever the clock is zero okay so i have to modify the sta line when the clock is zero so that's why i have drawn the uh, dotted lines whenever the clock is low now i want to transfer the data zero so i have to modify the stln so i have to modify the stln when the clock is low so at the center i'll modify okay at this position i'll modify the clock i'll just modify to zero which means low and then continue up to the next clock okay after that i have to make it one so i have to make it one here okay and i have to continue up to here okay again i have to make it zero so make it zero and continue
from here again i have to do the transaction from here to here it is one from here to here it is one from here to here it is one okay now i have to send the zero so i have to make it low and send it to and make it low so this is the how stf sta waveform looks like whenever the clock is low we have changed the data see only when the clock is low that is the main criteria here see whenever the clock is low okay if there is no need to change the data we can leave it okay you can see here the, if there is no change no need to change the data we have left it as it is okay we need to change the data here if we need to change the data we have to change it okay now what happens if when the clock is high when the clock is high okay what is the data on the stln here the data is one so it is taken by the internal buffer of the slave okay here the clock is high so here the data is zero okay zero here the clock is high the data is one one clock is high data is zero okay zero clock is high data is one one clock is high data is one clock is high data is one okay the clock is high here the the value of the data is zero so zero so this is lsb and this is msb so in order to get this order flip the bits okay one zero one zero one 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 zero see these bits are matching with these bits okay which means we established a proper communication okay so this is how using a clock we can send the data from master to slave okay this is the only data line right so either it can send or it can take okay which means at a time there is only one way communication right either from master to slave or slave to master okay so that's why it is called half duplex system okay it is serial communication because we are sending the bits bit by bit okay it is synchronous because we are sharing the same clock between two devices okay it is a half communic half duplex system because that transferring of the data between the two devices are not simultaneously done okay now here are the key points see whenever the clock is high we have to put the data on the stln whenever the clock is low we have to take the data from the stln in the further lectures we're going to cover the all the topics